Welcome to Corks and Conversation with Ashley Winstead. Yes, we are so excited to talk with this debut author of In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife, which we loved. And Love we're holding it up the cover. right now. I'm obsessed yes. with this cover. Yes, it's very cool. I know. Um, and it seems that we were not the only ones completely obsessed with this debut thriller. Um, the list of great reviews and praise is long, topped by the New York Times book review and an Amazon best book of the month is all. Oh, that's it. That's, that's it. All. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this book is great. And so let me tell you a little bit more about Ashley. So yes, please. Ashley Winstead holds a PhD in contemporary American literature from Southern Methodist University and a BA in English and art, art history from Vanderbilt University. Um, she lives in Houston, Texas, my Southern place um, where she drinks red wine and um, dreams up novels. Her debut novel, In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife, which we just spoke about, came out last summer, as Kathy said, to rave reviews. Um, for example, the New York Journal of Books review said of the novel, a dark, oh no, a twisty dark puzzle. Fans of books such as The Girl on the Train and Gone Girl will find this book captivating, as well as anyone who enjoys being led down a winding, frightening path. Highly recommended. So, Ashley, it's so good to see you today. Oh, it's such a pleasure. And thank you for that incredible introduction. It's the most confident I've felt in a very long time. <laughs> uh, actually, sound uh, legit. So, thank you. Yes, you definitely <laughs> do. You are legit. Yep, yep. <laughs> Well, um, so for today's uh, podcast episode, the most important thing is really the wine. <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> because really, but we finally you know. met our author soulmate who likes to drink red wine while she's plotting up her books. Christy, this is so perfect. I know. Um, so we're drinking the La Crema. Well, some of us, some of us aren't <laughs> today. Sad. Wham wham. Um, are <laughs> drinking the La Crema Pinot Noir, which seems a perfect match for a cool <laughs> November evening, which I think only one of the three of us is having, I'm just saying, um, talking about this dark, twisty novel. So the La Crema um, Pinot Noir is from Sonoma, California, and it has aromas. You guys take a drink while I read here. Okay, sure. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is like a drinking game. It has aromas of ripe cherry, cocoa, mm -hmm. anise, and rich baking spices, plush flavors of cherry, plum, and pomegranate, meld with hints of delicate tea leaf structured balanced acidity and elegant firm tannins round out the mouth well that's a lot that but a it lot is very say. tasty it is very tasty and uh i don't know that i get all of that because my palate isn't sophisticated enough, no but, I, you know, I never I love am. it <laughs> i'm like if yeah. you say that's in there but i believe you <laughs> yeah, right. i will believe you <laughs> yep it I does know, they can like, really write anything at this point, you know? yeah. at this point. <laughs> right. I, and some of them I love the the wine descriptions that are just so creative like old leather shoe strap <laughs> yeah. and, like, yeah. you're like oh okay yeah I guess I Great. get that yeah. Uh, yeah. you know yeah. a few yeah. glasses in and you're, you'll believe anything yeah. like, you're I can like, see okay. that leather can, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, awesome man. that's fun all okay. right so I'm enjoying so it. this is pretty great so like the review said this is a twisty, turny psychological thriller. And um, I'm going to show the cover again because I'm, I'm really obsessed. I just think the title's great. The cover's great. And the book lives up to it. I'm just saying. But <clears throat> so this um, involves a, a class reunion, a college 10-year class reunion. And um, the main character, Jessica, tells the story through her points of view, both now and when she was um, in college. So she's, so the chapters are now and then, and I really am curious about your point of view choice. Um, and I should tell everybody that the scene is a 10 year college reunion, like you mentioned, were brought back to the murder of um, one of this really tight knit group of, of students. There's six friends. Um, <clears throat> and so Anyway, that's the backdrop. So talk to us about your choice of point of view for Jessica being the eyes that we hear this or see this through. Yeah, I love that question. Um, and a lot of times that question is actually framed um, as why did you choose such an unlikable uh, <laughs> character through which to frame your book? And, and so, you know, I'll start by kind of acknowledging 
her unlikability, but saying that's precisely why I was so determined to write this book from the point of view of Jessica Miller, um, because I, you know, as a similarly unlikable woman, I guess, um, which I would, I would argue so many of us are if we were held to the same standards that fictional characters right. were. That's true. Um, but yeah. I, so I started writing in my dreams, I hold a knife and really uh, Jessica was the first thing I saw. Mm. So I, I call in my dreams, my failure book, um, which is maybe ironic or strange because it's my debut novel. It's like the first novel that actually broke out for me and got, got published. Um, but I started dreaming up the book after experiencing like a gauntlet of professional failure in my writing career. I had been trying to write for over a decade, um, had gone through spells where I, I gave up completely, um, you know, spells where I tried desperately, desperately shelved manuscripts. Um, and I had gotten so close, I thought, in the, in the winter of 2019. I, I thought I had, I got into a program called Pitch Wars, which I, I won't, you know, so I could spend a lot of time talking about it, but I won't um, just know that it's a, a mentoring program, a pretty famous mentoring program yeah. for unagented writers. And the whole point of it is to gut your book together with more experienced writers and then uh, showcase your work and have agents flock to you and their agent, you know, rate of getting people uh, agented is just so high and it's like the golden ticket for unagented writers and so I thought after years and years of moving closer and failing that this was going to be my time and I crashed and burned in mm. that agent showcase so hard um, I got very little interest and the extra layer of, of difficulty here is for, for a long time, I'd been trying and failing in obscurity just by myself. You know, when you send out queries to agents, that's just you and the agent. Uh, this was a very public failure because mm -hmm. the website is public. Mm -hmm. Everyone, you know, the ton of people in the writing community go to speculate and watch and witness. And so I was feeling very humiliated, frankly. Um, and not only that, but I was friends. I just made all these new friends in, in the Pitch Wars community who were soaring, who were mm. getting those agent, those agent relationships and, and publishing their book. So I had a dark night of the soul where I grabbed a bottle of red wine uh, <laughs> to no one's surprise. I turned off all the <laughs> lights in the house. I laid on my couch. I sipped off this bottle and I just let myself feel what I was going to feel because deep in my heart, I was so jealous of my friends. Mm. And I was so ashamed that I couldn't just succeed. And I also knew I could tell no one because that is shameful to feel that way. And you're not <sighs> supposed to feel that way. And so as I'm laying there, knowing that this is my night and tomorrow, I'm going to have to get up and swallow it like an adult and move on. I let myself channel my feelings into this vision of a woman who would not be healthy, who would not, you know, who, who did not, who would refuse to let the world treat her the way that she, you know, didn't feel she should be treated, who would do anything and wait however long it took to kind of reorder the world to recognize her. So I really channeled a lot of those feelings. And so I saw the vision of Jessica in my head, this woman like pouring over her reflection in the mirror, looking for flaws and being glad that there weren't too many. Um, and that's really how the book just took off for me. So it all started with Jessica. Jessica. Wow. So this, so you did Pitch Wars with another book? I did. Yep. A wow. book that is now shelved and will never see the light of day. Oh, wow. So uh, yeah, because when I was research researching it, I thought this was the book from Pitch Wars. Wow. So yeah, you wrote it really quickly, didn't you? And then got it out there. Yes. So the power of procrastination is what I say about this. Um, I did end up after a long time of, of pain, getting an agent from my Pitch Wars book eventually. So I wish I could have told myself that on that dark night that it was coming. Um, and quickly after I got my agent, she sent me 
a I, I love Melissa if you ever hear this I love you this is not a complaint but she sent me like a 25 page edit letter or something on this book that I just spent months gutting and I looked at this edit letter and I said to myself I could do this or I could start fresh on some on this idea that just sparked into my head this thing I feel a compulsion to write and so I let myself procrastinate what I needed to do by writing this other book and I did I wrote it I, I had a full-time job during that time and so I was working really like probably 60 hours a week at my full-time job it was very intense but so in nights and weekends I just grabbed whatever time I could and it took me four months to draft in my wow. dreams which wow. which I would say isn't the fastest you know I've heard writers say like oh I've you know, I, I drafted in two weeks or it sounds yeah. it's pretty fast. We didn't need a lot of <laughs> okay, authors. <laughs> yeah. I was like, <clears throat> um, and that that's of course doesn't count the editing, uh, all the editing. Yeah, and especially edited, but... when you're working full time, sixty hours. I mean, oh, man. you know, that's a big. I don't. I. I was not sleeping. Yeah, I don't but know you were how. driven by this story. This that's right. what's so cool about this is that you had this. She came to you, and you had to get her out on the page. Very when cool. I think back to the process of writing, I like, I, it's almost a body memory a feeling of being hunched over my laptop, almost breathless. Like I could not get the words wow. on the page fast enough. Um, so that, that's what I remember. A haze, but that. That's that so cool. So, yeah, so that's, Jessica, a, that's an awesome feeling. She had to be your point of view yeah. narrator. I mean, you didn't even consider then like multiple points of view because you had six, these six characters. So. It's That's a big really ensemble cast, but I knew it had to be Jessica. Um, I actually did not know that, um, you know, I'll keep the discussion spoiler. Yeah, we're not going to give any spoilers. Yeah, because you have to go buy the book. <laughs> yes, yeah. no, no spoilers, but there are some POV changes. Um, Towards the, the end, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I actually didn't know before I started writing. I knew what the plot would be, but once I got to those points of the plot, I thought to myself, this has to shift POV. I didn't know if I was allowed to do that by like the, you know, the right, the, the rules, I, yeah, the rules, the contract <laughs> right. I had established with the reader, like you're going to hear this story from Jessica's POV. So I just experimented and thought like, let's see if I'll, I can get away with this. If readers will follow it me. really went seamless when you're oh, reading great. it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's it did. Really good yeah. yeah. So did you know, so as, cause as you're reading this uh, to me, as a, as a writer reading this, I thought she had to be plotting this so intricately to go back and forth yeah. so are you gonna break my heart and tell me that you just pants this <laughs> i am not gonna break your heart i'm confirm <laughs> confirming your writer's instincts <laughs> in that i wrote a 42 page outline where i for this book before i ever got to that like you know that that daisy phase of of drafting yeah. where I just meticulously plotted every inch, every scene into the dialogue. I color coded wow. all of the different plot lines with the different characters so that I could put them up on my wall and visually see the, the plot lines interweaving um, and see like, oh, there's there's not enough here of this happening here. You know, we need to we need to fix that. So um, yeah, I, wow. I'm a fan of intricate mysteries. So I really wanted to try my hardest to to write one. You sound so, like Kathy to me. Well, I, I like I mean, the planning. She's, she likes the, all that planning, you know. I do. Like, I like the planning that turns two me planners. on. <laughs> yeah. Love it. yeah, me too. I'm like, I, to be honest, I can't even start writing until I have the entire book plotted from A to Z. That's how much of a planner I am. But well, don't it you works. think that <laughs> that allowed you then to do that just feverish writing because you yes. could just in, immerse yourself because you knew right. where you were headed? That's what I always say when uh, my my lovely pantser <laughs> friends are like, oh, that sounds miserable. Don't you then yeah. get bored because you've already told yourself a story. Um, and I'm like, no, it's the exact opposite. That Doing that meticulous planning gives me the freedom to be creative and explore because I feel like I've got this foundation under my feet. Mm -hmm. And okay, I can, I can revise things if mm -hmm. you know the creativity takes over. But yeah, it's what frees me up. 
Yeah, yeah, I can see that too. Yeah. Even I though I'm that. a pantser, I'm sorry. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, she when I to get towards I the end, when you have to really pull everything together, that's when I kind of really plan more. And then it is, it goes really fast then because I'm like, oh, I don't have to guess like, oh, what do I want them to do today? You know, mm -hmm. I can just be like, <laughs> okay, they're doing this, you know? <laughs> so... I find great. dancing magical. I would great. love to be able to have that talent, but oh, right. Yeah. Just well, you also your <clears throat> all your characters are very, very complex, and I'm wondering too. Do you do the same level of, you know, backstory everything before you even get started on writing on them? Yeah, um, I am devoted to Lisa Kron's story genius, and I use. <laughs> Kathy's yeah. like, it's right here. No, I did. I grabbed it. Because um, I read that you liked it and I grabbed it. This is the. Six. It's so good. Um, and it is, I, I fully agree with Lisa's thesis in this book that, you know, plot is great and everything, but what readers are really coming to stories for is to immerse themselves in someone else's mind. And they want to see, uh, they want to be glued to someone's brain and see them make choices and see them confront things and see this development arc and just feel like they really understand this person's brain. And so I reading, I've, I've used the story genius for every book I've written so far. And I started, um, I did the story genius method, which with each of the characters and in my dreams. So that also took me um, quite a little while. But what I did is I, I call it now character mapping, which is probably something I stole from somewhere. Um, but, you know, I, I don't it works. Know. Yeah, it works. <laughs> so I started with uh, Jessica and Heather, um, and they were my two touchstones uh, in the book, my two characters. And so I did deep dives in figuring out who these two women were, not their birthdays and their favorite colors, but you know, their deepest, darkest desires and their misbeliefs, you know, like what they misunderstood about the world that just constantly um, shot them in the foot. Exactly. Yeah. And so I figured this out for them. And then I built all of the other characters in the friend group, all the rest of the East House Seven in relationship to them. So I knew two things. I wanted each of the other characters. I set a lot of rules for myself, but I, I wanted each of the other characters to have something that Jessica wanted really deeply, but couldn't get like mint with his money or Frankie with his natural talent and so on. Uh, or Coop with his like ability to not care and, and disassociate. <laughs> uh, so each of the other characters would represent something that she wanted, but couldn't have. And then each of the characters in turn, Heather would represent or, or threaten something that they wanted very deeply. And that was necessary, I felt, to make each of them credible suspects in her murder. Um, and well, that's, yeah, it that, worked. <laughs> Again, it worked. Oh. <laughs> so I, that's interesting. I'm going to have to get that book, I guess. We're going to have to put a link on our yes. website. Really yeah, recommend. that sounds great. I, yeah, I, I think you would like it, Kirsty, because it's very um, brain-based, science-based, you know, and I think that would, because Christy's a science background person, and I think that would, I think it'll appeal to you. Well, I'm going to get uh, it. <laughs> I, yes, absolutely. Okay, so we're about midway, um, Ashley, and so this is when we like to ask the authors, we get to talk to a question in the bottle, and so it's a question that might come up when you get to the end of a bottle. Um, just kind of a fun random question, Christy, as you can see, is shaking an actual bottle of questions. We used to call Amazing. it craft question, but that was too hard to say. So it was. Nobody talk. understood. They're like, craft? We could have done craft <laughs> questions, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right. So the question is, what would be your perfect weekend? Oh, gosh. Okay, this is easy. Um, <laughs> I would go back to Tuscany. And this is like unlimited, right? Unlimited yes, money. There's uh, no budget. <laughs> okay, um, great. Then I would go back to Tuscany, which is my favorite place on earth. It's where I got engaged, um, oh. luckily. And I would spend a weekend drinking wine and eating pasta and just enjoying the weekend, probably with my husband and uh, definitely with my husband and my family. <laughs> he can come. Yeah, he can come. But mostly the important part is me and the wine and the pasta. 
in that I have order. the perfect place yeah. for you. We can talk <laughs> later. There's a villa on the um, Mediterranean in Tuscany there that gorgeous. Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I, I went there. It would, they kind of, you know, rent out rooms and place, you know, so we went there with a group. I'm eyeing 2022 very hopefully for yeah. really well. I, I'm an optimist, so I'll <laughs> I think sure 2022 is going to but... happen. I think it is. It I can. A... Yes. By the end, yeah. maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Let's hope. Yeah. <laughs> cr- well, hope fingers crossed. Yep. Okay, so um, we did already talk about pitch wars because I was that's what I was going to ask you about, and um, so. Even though this process didn't work for you, do you still believe that that's a good process? Or, um, you know, do you suggest that, I don't know, people hire an editor instead or something? I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, that's, I love that question. And so the fun part is, is this year for the first time, I'm actually a Pitch Wars mentor. So I've come full circle and now I'm on the other side. Um, So life is great that way. So I really do believe in it. Um, and like like I mentioned, eventually it was Pitch Wars that eventually, eventually helped me <laughs> land my agent, um, even though it wasn't quite as quickly. And so I am approaching my mentorship now this year. We just announced mentees. So it's very fun, very exciting. So you already I, have your mentee? I do. I have my mentee. Um, her name is VA Vasquez, and she has written a men's script Uh, titled as of now dating in murderville and it's this like phenomenal it's basically like you meets home before dark meets like only fans which i know sounds uh, wow but it is just sexy and dark and voicey and so i'm really excited Mm. to help her you know just kind of uh work on this and, and bring it out into the world so i do love it but what i'm going to do with uh with VA and and any other writers that I'm I'm speaking to is emphasize how much of a crapshoot everything is even Mm -hmm. even something like pitch wars which feels like okay this is finally it for me Mm -hmm. um and you know I don't know how much I would I think I think it can be dicey hiring editors and spending money um to improve your craft I've had friends who've done it to incredible results and it was really worth it. And I've had friends who didn't have that experience. Yeah. Um, so it really is. Yeah. It's, it's hard to say, but uh, perseverance, grit, reading craft books, reading as much of the, the work in the genre that you're wanting to write in, I think are the mm-hmm. most important things. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I believe in pitch wars enough to be here on the mentoring side. So if anyone's so, listening. So then yeah. in, in this whole publishing process, when you finally got into the publishing, was there something that, you know, you just like, oh my gosh, I never thought this would happen, like a surprise kind of thing or thing that you want to tell other new writers or whatever that watch out <laughs> so much uh, has surprised <laughs> me. I, I don't know how I would be able to choose. Um, this has been this year of being a debut has been nothing but knowing nothing and being continuously surprised and just, <laughs> really <laughs> and just trying my hardest to keep a cool calm head and you know if I'm worried about something reassure, reassure myself that I'm not the only person who's been worried about this in the history you know I'm not mm-hmm. unique this mm-hmm. is this is just the way it goes um But I will say things that surprise me are, um, I did not know how little control you have over your cover or your title even. Um, And so I love, yes, I love In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife, and I love uh, both the title and the cover. But getting there was a process, uh, a long, arduous process. (laughs) And it's really hard as, at least it was for me, but you can probably just hear already that, you know, I sometimes struggle with self-esteem issues and have plenty of imposter (laughs) syndrome. Um, Probably couldn't have written the book that I wrote without it. But, um, you know, I just felt always at a power disadvantage with my publisher and my editor who Mm. are 
the loveliest people in the world Mm -hmm. and of anyone, you know, I shouldn't have felt that way, but I was just so grateful that someone had finally taken a chance on me that it was hard for me to know when to use my voice and Mm. when to say like, I really care about this. So can we please keep looking at different options or can we please keep working on this? And some of the most terrified days I've had over the last year, it's like sending off emails that were very politely pushing back and then you know, ducking and covering. Right, like, and, what did I just do? Please don't drop me. <laughs> they're going to drop me. They're going to cancel the contract. I'm gonna, <laughs> or they're going to just like label me a difficult writer and no one's going to want to work with me. So I could see that. I would be the same yeah. way probably. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. we, we, we yeah. get to talk to so many writers about this process and, and everyone's what stories and takeaways are just, it's so interesting, but always what occurs to me is how, little you can actually control what like what's in your lane of control and that that's um for those of us that are control freaks (laughs) crazy yeah Yeah. (laughs) very interesting okay so i am fascinated to know about your other two novels that are in the works they are different genres which I love. Yes. One of them is a thriller, my second thriller, but the other one is my romance debut. That's so exciting. (laughs) Thank you. So a lot of people are like, say what (laughs) now? You're doing what? Um, But yeah, next next year, I actually have two books coming out. Um, April 5th, I have uh, Fool Me Once, which is my romance slash women's fiction debut. And it centers around a woman named Lee Stone, who is professionally a total badass. She's the comms director for an all women's run electric vehicle company in Texas, in Austin. Oh, cool. Yeah, she's a total badass um, in her professional life, but in her personal life, she's a total mess. Uh, she's a party <laughs> girl. Her nickname is Stoner. Uh, very well deserved. Uh, she's not the kind of woman who is typically the center of, you know, Um, a a romance and she knows it she's this is self-described and she's cool with that Uh, she doesn't really believe in love and so uh, she has gone around throughout her life and made enemies of pretty much all of her (laughs) ex-boyfriends oh (laughs) she just things explode for her uh, a lot and so the book opens with her finally getting the chance to seize her professional Everest she calls it which is passing a green energy bill in the state of Texas of all places. Mm. Oh, right, they, yeah. Yeah, this is a cathartic <laughs> politics book yeah. where we're pretending that that's possible. Um, it felt great to write that uh, <laughs> version of Texas. But so she, she has this chance with the governor, but the man that she has to work on passing this bill with is none other than the man, the one man she loved from her past. Oh who my she gosh. most explosively ended things with and essentially ruined his life and drove him out of the state of Texas. He's oh, back. wow. That's pretty yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. She's she's a bit of a mess, but a lovable one. So that's my... Oh, that'll, yeah. that'll be fun trying to get them <laughs> back together. Yeah. So I'm curious about where writing that fit in with writing these thrillers. Like, were you... Was that always in your mind? Have you already been working on that? Yeah. I The theme is messy women, apparently. Um, I'm learning. <laughs> it's just across, you know... messy women or women with um some a lot of complex thoughts and feelings going Mm. going on Um, (laughs) you don't always make the best choices so i am a voracious reader of thrillers romances fantasy actually the my pitch wars book was a fantasy if you the one that got shelved i know i'm all over the map um (laughs) i just love trying on different styles and different voices it feels so fun um Mm -hmm. And so while I was working on In My Dreams edits, I started writing. Uh, it was originally called Stoner. Now it's Fool Me Once, <laughs> um, for obvious reasons. <laughs> like marketability. Yeah, I was going to say that, that Romans um, <laughs> market didn't want Stoner. <laughs> so I just started writing it and, and it was such a joy. And I wrote it during the early days of the pandemic. And it brought me so much. My husband called it my my cackle book because he would walk into rooms and find me laughing out loud at oh, things that I'd written awesome. to myself. He's like, you are, you are too much. <laughs> uh, that's great. Yeah. 
So, so that's are you, you're not still working 60 hours a week plus writing these multiple books? Thank goodness. No, <laughs> I, I have been um, a full-time writer for, I think three months now. Wow. So I'm so excited and I'm so grateful because I don't know, right now I'm currently uh, drafting two books uh, concurrently and I don't know how I would have done this on top of the, the day job. So now do you, just... ha do you have contracts for two different books? Is that why you're drafting two at the same time or? One is contracted and one is my next that fingers crossed will eventually find a home. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so do you have, I, I know that you like to be organized and you're writing planning. Are you the same way about your writing day? Uh, I am, I don't know if the word is organized more than like the, a creature of routine. Mm. I do the exact same thing, sit in the exact same place, have the exact same cup of coffee, <laughs> go through the exact same motions every single day. Um, and that is what I guess gives me a sense of peace or I guess you would call that orderliness in, yes. its, in its own way. <laughs> well, you know, there's something to be said for that because then you don't have to waste your brain thinking of what I'm going to, where am I going to sit? What am I going to have? You know, you can spend that on your creative writing and everything mm -hmm. else. You know, it's like this where people wear the same clothes every day. Like they just, <laughs> you know, have three different shirts, so the same shirt in different colors and they just mix yeah. and match. Yeah. I mean, I've always I wanted to kind of do that too. <laughs> Are you, <clears throat> Christy uh, recently visited me. Funny. I thought you were making fun of my husband because he does that. He oh, wears no, the exact no, same no, no. thing every single day. Because he, he, it truly was a decision-making ease for him. He's like, I just don't want to think about that piece of my life. It's like so we're animals, man. Remember when our kids could wear, you know, <laughs> yes. uniforms to school and stuff? It's like, don't have he to He has think. like 11 of the same shirts and 11 <laughs> of the same pants. See, that is my jam. I do the exact same thing. I have like a bunch of black shirts and dresses and that's that's like i rotate them i'm gonna often. i'm gonna this is inspire me i'm gonna try that again yeah well i think you know it's, it, i think it's easy because you know writers tend to work from home or from a, a different location where people who are in a more traditional work environment they go and do pretty much the same thing every day and there's something mm -hmm. to be said about that routine mm -hmm. i, I think, love but... a routine and my, every single writing day it, it's very comforting because they're it's bookended by coffee and wine so i'll start it <laughs> i'll kick it off with coffee and then it gets to 6 30 and it's time to crack open the bottle of wine <laughs> which is my little reward and then if i have any spicy scenes that i have been saving to write mm. i usually write them during wine time oh. Ooh, there you go. maybe That's revealing a little bit concept. too much writing tip <laughs> All right, great. this has That's been great. so fun. Before we yeah. go, Christy has a final question oh, yes. for you. Okay, so we ask this of all our writers, um, mm -hmm. which of your characters would you like to share a meal with and what would it be? Ooh, I love that question. So many of my characters would come for me. Um, so I have to be very, <laughs> uh, very- <laughs> I know, right? It's like, um, okay, well, can I be behind bars while yeah. I eat? <laughs> <laughs> characters are rather dangerous um, yeah. and, and conniving so I guess it would probably be two of the nicer characters so Coop it would be I'd love to share so, a bottle of wine or two over a meal with Coop um, and then probably Caro because she's a good one yeah. I was yeah. thinking Coop too I was too yes. that's funny I'm single, oh so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he just seems like he'd be pretty fun Oh, yeah. <laughs> he would show you a good time, I feel. <laughs> okay, yeah. Ashley, our listeners are going to want to know more about you. So where's the best place to find you? You can find me at ashleywinstead.com. Um, I'm on Instagram where I'm most active at Ashley Winstead Books and then Twitter at Ashley Winstead. Okay. So those are my places. Great, great. Well, this is this has been a really fun conversation. So fun. And Such thank you blast. so much for joining us. Thank yes. you for having and now me. We just have to, we have to do a cheers. 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 Cheers to you. Thank you so much. Thanks.